سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله سبحان الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على السلام حي على السلام حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهدي ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي واجعل لي وزيرا من اهلي امين يا رب العالمين اللهم اغفر ذنوبنا وطهر قلوبنا واحسن فروجنا امين 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 يا رب العالمين today i would like to speak with you on a weird topic as usual my topics are quite weird and that is love and infatuation in our youth uh since we have just passed the valentine before two weeks and uh some of you must be thinking right now astaghfirullah what happened to imam imam will be speaking on the topic of love and infatuation he should speak about the relevant issues about the issues of beard about the issues of uh, kufi about the issues of keeping your trousers above the ankle this is relevant topic what about love and infatuation what about marital life <clears throat> so that's their reaction but this is the most relevant topic you know two weeks before on 14 feb actually on 13 feb i went to walmart and i guess it's not haram to go there isn't it so i went to walmart and i saw everything was red red dress red balloons roses i saw the media media was completely red one of my friend relative called from pakistan and he said even here on 14 of our approach approaching near everything is red now so i thought everything is red might as well join the red team today so i wear the red one today <laughs> anyways so if everything can discuss about valentine and love and infatuation why not we can discuss this damn issue and we can give the islamic perception to our youngsters that what <coughs> does islam say about love and infatuation and the valentine day if they can learn from haram sources why not we can give them from the halal source what does islam have to say about these things and we are obviously afraid of addressing these issues as an imam as a parents we does not communicate about these things and this is the recipe for disaster because once we will stop the communication then anything can happen then anything can happen and subhanallah one of the most beautiful things about prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is that he would always address the issue which is related to the masses of the masses of the community which is connected to the majority of the people that issue would be addressed first and foremost by prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam you know once i was giving the talk on the identical topic in louisiana in one of the areas called baton rouge it's one hour away from new orleans area i don't remember the name of the masjid i was giving the talk on the identical topic the topic was shake please help me i am in love 
youth session, completely youth session. And I asked one of the youngsters within my talk that what will happen if you will ask your Imam or your Sheikh or your religious advisor that Imam or Sheikh, I'm in love, please help me. Give me any Islamic advice. What will happen? So you know what he replied? He said the Sheikh will going to take out its gun and take the headshot. <laughs> SubhanAllah, and obviously he will keep the blood on <laughs> so to keep more intense. SubhanAllah. The one way of saying is that no, you are too young. You should concentrate on your education. When you will graduate, I will help you to get married to her and so forth. One way is approaching with a polite way. And one way is to take your haram, 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 and that sort. All, all of these things will become haram. <laughs> SubhanAllah. Look at the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If we say that لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا in Surah Al-Ahzab, Ayat number 21, that in every aspect of life, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave us role model. So what about love? If you want to pray, we pray according to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you want to fast, we fast according to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you want to love, we want to love according to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So let us open his life and before love, what about a counselor? What about as a person who, as a mentor? How Prophet Muhammad used to give advice on these issues to Sahaba? You know, once a Sahaba and the gathering of the Sahaba was there, Prophet Muhammad was sitting in the middle. One of the Sahabi, young Sahabi, single Sahabi, now just look at the intensity of his question. He came and he asked Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Ya Rasulullah, ihzalli bizzina. I don't know how to translate this right now, Wallahi, because some very small kids are sitting. In front of companions, Prophet Muhammad is there, he's addressing Prophet Muhammad and he's saying, Oh Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I want to perform that bad evil deed with that girl, give me permission. You know what? Most of the times our youth have the questions. The most intense level they would ask us, even this relationship is haram before marriage? This is the most intense question. Look at this Sahaba, look at the intensity. He's going to whom? The pious person on the face of the earth, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the pious gathering of companions and he's asking, I have already made up my mind, I want to do it, I just wanted to take your permission. SubhanAllah. Some Sahabi stood up and they tried to stop this companion. Look at whom you are talking to. You are talking to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you know what Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said? Ijlis. Ijlis. Sit here. He sat there for Jalasa, he sat there. And then Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam looked at the wisdom. He didn't yell, he didn't scream. He says, okay, you want the permission of doing, doing that bad evil deed with that girl? Okay, just tell me this. Would you like the same act for your mother? That some other guy would do the same thing to with your mother? La wallahi. He said, no, 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 no. Swear to Allah, I will hear it. He says, Kadalika an nas la yuhibbuna huli He says, similarly, similarly, people will hear it if you were going to do with their mother. Then, would you like the same thing for your daughter, for your sister? He said, no, la wallahi. He said, similarly, you are taking permission of doing that bad evil deed, bad deed with particular girl. That girl might be the sister of someone. That girl might be the daughter of someone. So make one standard. Look at the wisdom. He's not screaming. He's not yelling. He's using logic to prove the youngster that this is a bad deed. And in last, that youngster became satisfied with the answer, subhanAllah. This is the wisdom of the beautiful messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in last, this is not had, uh, completed. In last, before he can leave that gathering, Prophet Muhammad prayed for him. Allahumma gfir dhambahu. Oh Allah, please forgive his sins. He was not, he didn't knew what he was asking for. Allahumma tahir qalbahu. Oh Allah, please purify his heart from these thinkings. Wa ahsin farjahu. Oh Allah, please guard his private part. Make it, give him wife so that he can take those desires with a halal way. Even Prophet Muhammad is praying and counseling with the wisdom. We need to learn as a counselor. You know what can happen in our times? I give this examples many a times and repetition will no, not harm us. You know, if as a father, I will give you my example. If I have a son and going into public school, here if they are going to public school, this can happen with anyone. If my son is going into public school and I'm pretty sure nowadays Islamic school is no exception to this. If he's in 8th grade or let's say ninth grade, first year of high school, a non-Muslim girl may come to him and says, you are looking cute, want to go for a date? Then he will come to me as a father. And you know what he will say? That she was saying I'm cute. What do you think? 
You know what I will do as a possessive father, as a father who have just arrived from Pakistan or India or Egypt, FOB, fresh off the boat. <clears throat> slap slap. Okay. Slap slap and I think things are going to work with this way. Next day, same girl will come to him. Yesterday you didn't respond. What about today? Want to go for a date? Now just tell me honestly, will my child come to me again? <coughs> because he will think this information is too hot to handle for my dad. <laughs> yeah. Let's go to my friend. And when he will go to friend, tell me honestly, most of the friends in this country are Muslim, non-Muslim. Even if they are Muslim, non-practicing Muslim. And you cannot expect Islamic advice from non-practicing Muslim or non-Muslim. You know what they will say? Just go for it, man. While you are waiting, you will be loser if you will miss the opportunity. Just go for it. Tell me how was it. They were going to talk like this with your son. You know what I just did? I chopped my own hands. So we need to develop as a father and as a mother too. As a mother too. A strategy. I'm not saying give them permission. Please do not misquote me. Rather use a strategy, use wisdom to negate this. Do not say it's haram, do not do it. Rather use if humble words and polite words. You are too young. I will going to marry you with her once you will become old and so on and so forth. But try to use wisdom first and foremost. Now coming back to the solution. What solution did Islam give to the person who is infatuated right now? You know, we don't know this. Wallahi, we don't know this. But our great scholars have written books on this particular this topic. I would give reference of two books. Sheikh Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah uh, wrote Ar-Rawdatul Muhibbeen. More than 500 pages book dedicated on this topic of love and infatuation. We don't know this. Ibn Hazm wrote a book Tawqul Hamama. More than 150 pages dedicated on this topic. What to do in love and infatuation. We don't know this. We don't have a time to read Quran. What about these other books? <laughs> Subhanallah. You know what these great scholars write in this book? They say love and infatuation is a natural thing. It's a natural thing. It can happen to anyone. But the point or the question to ask is how to control this as a Muslim because Allah will test us to see his obedience. Ibn Al-Qayyim writes in his book in Rodotul Muhibbeen, love is by choice first and then by force. You have the authority on yourself. And what are the factors you control? There are primarily two factors. Listen to this. There are primarily two factors. If you control this, you can control love, infatuation and every other aspect. First, to control your gaze, to control your sight. This is first and foremost. All of the youngsters, if you are looking carelessly around here and there to every attractive girl and all of the sisters here, if you are looking around here and there to every attractive boy, you have opened the door for shaitan. You will soon get infatuated. You will soon get attracted by that individual. And I'm not talking about only school. Whether you are looking her on Facebook profile, whether you are looking her on Twitter, whether you are looking her on YouTube video, or whether you are looking her on your school, wherever you are, if you are looking her and she's attracting you, then there are high chances you will get infatuated. Then you cannot do anything after this. So control your gaze, lower your sight. As Allah says, Qul lil min Keep your gaze lower. You don't have any right to look at someone's daughter. Just keep this in your head clear. This is the first thing. Second thing, if we would indulge ourselves into a useless conversation with opposite gender, and I'm pretty sure you all are smart enough to distinguish what is the difference between useless and useful conversation, right? Or I should give examples. No, no, time will not permit me. If we would avoid useless conversation, then we would stay away from this infatuation. But if you're talking with her on phone for hours and hours, you're talking with her in school or whether in Facebook, then there are high chances you yourself have committed this first haram and then the final thing can come. Infatuation can happen, love can happen, and that those things can happen. Stay away. You don't have any right to talk to her. Please keep this in clear in your head. These two things we have to control. Lower your gaze and do not indulge into useless conversation. If she's sitting in the front and if she's attracting you, you should sit at the back of the class. This, would, this should be your behavior as a Muslim. But now, after telling all of these things, if you are infatuated, and if you cannot control now, then what to do? Even then Islam gives us a solution. Even then Islam gives us a solution. Then Islam says, Prophet Muhammad said in the hadith, Ya ma'ashar al-shabaab, O youngsters, 
Allah, Allah's Messenger is addressing to all of us youngsters. Ya ma'ashur al-shabaab, man istata'a minkum al-ba'a fal yatazawwaj. Whoever has a means to get married, they should get married as soon as possible. And means of marriage is what? Means of marriage is what? Getting house in Oak Tree Road? Yeah? What is means of marriage? If you have a two meals, in Sharia I am telling you, if you have two meals to feed yourself and to your wife, you can get married, according to Sharia. This is our standards that you should have a house in Woodbridge area, you should have a BMW and so on and so forth. No, 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 no. Islam keep it simple. If you have a means to get married, get married as soon as possible because it will help you to guard your gaze and to protect your private part. This is the statement of Prophet Muhammad and all of the youngsters, please do not fool yourself. Please do not deceive yourself that no, I'm very young, I'm 20 years old, but I'm very young. <laughs> if you can have a girlfriend in 20 years old, if in 20 age, if you can have a girlfriend, you are not too young for marriage. <laughs> Subhanallah, then you are not too young. And even parents here have to support their child. If their children want to pursue the halal way of doing love, that is marriage, do not put barriers and obstacles in their way. You know, many times as a parent, if our youngster would come to us, that today I heard a khutbah, Imam, say, Imam Sahib was saying that this is a haram thing and I want to marry her. You know, as a father, what we would say? Look at your age, 21 year old. You have not bought a house yet. Where you will keep her? Say to them, we will keep in our room. That's it. <laughs> there is no problem. Subhanallah, there is no problem at all. We all are coming from back home, Pakistan, India, Egypt. Just don't forget your reality. We all were living in joint family system, right? You have not yet completed your education. You have not yet completed your studies. Subhanallah. So these all excuses are for marriage, but yet they, he can keep his girlfriend. Subhanallah. Why don't you come up with these excuses for the girlfriend reason? Subhanallah. Make things easier. And even boys have to understand here. Once you want to marry, you know many a times as an imam, I receive the bioditas and request that if you see this, this girl, please let us know. And you know what are their demands? They want Miss Universe in hijab. <laughs> this cannot be a combo meal. <laughs> uh, and you have to sacrifice something. And in Islam, obviously, first and foremost, you have to give importance to religiosity. Subhanallah, if she's Miss Universe, why does she do hijab? Subhanallah. Subhanallah. We need to sacrifice something. And in Islam, we are asked to go for religiosity first. And then beauty is coming, then it's uh, good to have and even the fathers and the mothers of the daughter here have to understand Sometimes many times actually daughter wants to marry in 20 21 19 even But you know we as a father of a daughter we say no no the boy is not earning much Subhanallah Subhanallah what the lame excuse you know once my uh, one of my friend was working in a very big organi Islamic organization in a matrimonial committee so he said, once we asked family to look the other family, the boy liked the girl, the girl liked the boy, boy was computer engineer and he was earning good figures. And it was almost done and dusted the case. The, but the father of the daughter came and said, I don't want this boy, no, this is impossible. Why? Because he's not a doctor. I want doctor for my daughter. Why you want doctor, have two horns? That's why you want doctor? SubhanAllah, the, your daughter likes him. She, he likes your daughter, that's it. Just finish it. No, no, no. You will put barrier. Wallahi, I as a father of my daughter, love for my daughter to become a <coughs> wife of some person who is earning less as compared to become a girlfriend of someone who is earning much. I would love for my daughter to become a wife instead of some becoming something else. Subhanallah. What happened to our gaira? What happened to our mentality? We are Muslims. Subhanallah. So this is, uh, parents have to, and obviously parents also, have to make the process of nikah easier. I know whom I'm talking to. Wallahi, when we were in the back home, we had the extravagant weddings. You know how many wedding events we have? In Islam, there is only one wedding event, that is Walima. That is, that's it. Nikah at Masjid, most likely, and Walima at the cost of the boy, the groom. The bride and her family does not have to cost any single penny. Because they are giving their daughter, that's enough. That's enough. That's enough for a sacrifice. Subhanallah. But what happened to us? We make this process of nikah so hard that it's, wallahi, it's impossible for a young 
graduate from a university to get married because he have to save 60, 70, 80 thousand to get married. Because just because you as a father and mother wants to throw a ridiculous, insane, hell of an awful expensive party to your relatives. That like five events, never ending five, six events, like a Pakistan-India cricket match, where each day is a major event. You know, small engagement, primary engagement, secondary engagement, engagement part is done. Coming to the Shadi part, Nikah part, mainly Mayo, Hopeton, Green Day, Blue Day, Red Day, and then the final big event is Walima. Subhanallah. What's this? You, if you will make nikah, the process of nikah, how do you know what, what else would become easier? See now, I would give you f just a simple equation. Allah has put this loving, e uh, loving each other to boy and girl in the heart of every person. And Allah gave us the halal way. To take these desires out, there is a halal way called nikah, marriage. <laughs> if those desires would see a barriers and obstacles in that way, they will not be disturbed, they will find some other way. And what is the other way? Haram way, zina. There are only two terms in Islam, nikah or zina. There are only two terms in Islam, wife or girlfriend, or boy or uh, husband or boyfriend. There is no third term. If you would like for your daughter to become girlfriend, then follow the sunnah of shaitan. If you would like for your boy to become boyfriend, then follow the sunnah of shaitan. Otherwise, make things simple. Let them marry as soon as possible. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us this motivation from these Qurani ayat and ahadith so that we can let our sons and daughters marry as soon as possible. Amen. Now the first solution was if you as a youngster are feeling that I cannot continue this haram relationship if you are sitting here <coughs> so now first and foremost marry her and start living together. But if let's say now this is the first solution but now coming to second if this is not possible if you are too young means to be quite honest Islam doesn't say 17, 18 years old, it's haram, but well, like here in 17, 18, you are maybe physically uh, no, um, cross the age of puberty, but you are mentally, you are a kid. Mentally, you are a kid. You have a PlayStation game in your hand and you want to say to your dad, I want to marry her. And that's take some responsibility, bro. So before taking to 19, 20, 21, I guess this is the right meter, 2021, 20, you should start look for your sons. What should I do? If I'm at 18 or 19, or even before or after, what should I do? The second solution is coming. If you are going to university, if you are going to school, and if you like her or she likes you, then don't pursue halal, haram relationship. Islam doesn't allow you to hang around in the middle. Perform nikah and extend the process of rukhsati. You know what it does that mean? Extend the process of consummation. Even proof from Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Prophet Muhammad performed nikah with Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu anha and after three years, after three years, he performed the consummation. We can do this. Then now you will become halal wife and halal husband for you each other. You can go to class, you can go to school together, you can enjoy the status of halal, you can go together with the status of husband and wife. But please don't go to the haram places together. Come to the masjid together. Come to the Shizan restaurant for the khutbah. Don't go to AMC theater and watch Three Idiots and become the fourth one. Don't do this. Come to the halal places. Now the second one was this perform marriage and extend the process of Ruksati. Now the last thing. If you are sitting here in this khutbah and if you realize that um, I heard the Imam and this is not permissible. I make my mind. After this khutbah immediately you text her. Now Imam was I cannot pursue this haram relationship. I want to marry. And if she says this what happened to you? What were what you were doing for the last two years then? And all of a sudden you become Mullah? Who died and made you Sheikh? Yeah? I don't want to marry you, I just want to pursue friendly relationship with you. Now what you will do at that time? Then at that time, even Islam gave a solution. Ibn Qayyim wrote in his book, Radut al Mahibin in 23rd chapter, he says, Man haraman lahu halalan. Whoever leaves his girlfriend for the sake of Allah. Allah would going to give him a better substitute that is wife better substitute that is wife and same thing apply for girls whoever leaves her boyfriend for the sake of Allah Allah would going to give her a better substitute that is husband and the example is pretty clear Yusuf Ali Salam you know when Zulekha was inviting Yusuf Ali Salam to do that particular bad deed she was tempting Yusuf Ali Salam what Yusuf Ali Salam did he preferred to go into prison, jail. What Allah gave in return? 
He left something for Allah, right? What Allah gave him in return? Kingdom. Allah made him king. Allah gave him wealth. He was good looking. What else he could ask for? He got everything. Subhanallah. If you would leave today, ask yourself, ask yourself, whom do I love most? I love Allah or I love her? As far as believers is concerned, Believers only love Allah the most. If that is the case, leave her. Allah is going to give you better. Wallahi, Allah is going to give you better in a halal way. Just leave her, leave him sisters. Please, because we cannot pursue a haram relationship in Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give opportunity to our youngsters to leave all the haram relationships. Ameen, 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 ya rabbal alameen. Aqulu qawli haza wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'il al-muslimin al-muslimat. Bismillah alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa ala amma ba'ad. Now the last few things um, I wanted to discuss is regarding the Valentine's Day and the love concept of love which they are teaching us. I'm not going to talk about the history of Valentine, but the question to raise is why do we need someone, a non-Muslim called Mr. Saint Valentine to teach us love? Why do we need to reduce this love only on one day that is 14 Feb? I told you that who can be our best role model? Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? If he will open his life, love was filled in his life. I will just give you a few examples because uh, we are already uh, running out of time. I'll give you a few examples from his life, uh, from his life that how much love was filled in his life. SubhanAllah. First, you know Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu anha? She used to say whenever Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would talk to us, he would grab the hands of his wife before talking to us. SubhanAllah. To show what? To show love. You know, unlike us, when we talk to our wives, what we grab? We even can grab something. We grab the neck. Why you forget to put salt in my lassi? Yes? SubhanAllah. Be a man. Be a man. SubhanAllah. You know, Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu anha said, once I took an apple, I took a bite from an apple, then Prophet Muhammad sallallahu sallam took the apple, turned the around, he touched his beautiful lips on the same spot where my lips were touched. And take a bite, subhanallah, subhanallah. To show what? To show what? To show love. Unlike us, if our wives take a bite from apple, you know what we would say? Keep this apple away. A smell is coming. Yeah? You must have eaten onion before eating this apple. Yeah? Subhanallah. <laughs> Subhanallah. Just show, be considerate. Show some consideration for your wives. You know, once in a gathering, companions were sitting, Prophet Muhammad was sitting. Someone asked, Prophet Muhammad, whom do you love most? Without afraid, he said, I love my wife Aisha. Subhanallah. Wallah, it's very hard. For those of you who are married, it's very hard. In front of your friends, you are saying, I love my wife. If you ask me in this gathering, Imam, whom do you love most? Wallah, I would never say I love my wife. I would say I love my mother. I love my father, although I love them. But you know, I have this fear. The moment I would say I love my wife, then I have this fear that you would say, hey, Imam is afraid of his wife. Well, everyone is afraid. There is no harm. And the one who says, I'm not afraid, he's the biggest afraid person. Right? <laughs> because his wife is saying, if anyone asks you, anyone asks you say, I'm not afraid. <laughs> so he's obedient. Muti <laughs> Zawj, subhanAllah. SubhanAllah. So this is, he was not afraid to show his love. Now tell me, based on these examples, do we need anyone else apart from Prophet Muhammad SAW to teach us love? No. Do we need to reduce this love only on 14 Feb? Instead, we should celebrate Prophet Muhammad SAW day and love our wife and love our husband sisters. SubhanAllah. This is the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad SAW. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to perform this love with our spouses. Ameen Ya Rabbal Alameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us spouses. Ameen Ya Rabbal Alameen. Those who are married, they don't, don't say Ameen right now. Please, please, please. Sisters are sitting. <laughs> those who are single, they should say Summa Ameen also. But those who are married, they should, their dua is coming. And those of you who are married, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make your spouse coolness of your eyes. Ameen Ya Rabbal Alameen. Subhanallah walhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah Subhanallah walhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah